No, no, not yet, not yet. I'm around the same city. I'm doing it all. Once I'm done, I'll be doing it all. It's really happened on the Friday night. When we, okay, we were both playing, me and my baby. So I have to excuse myself, this guy is myself. And he was crying. The, Okay, he was crying. I left him when he was crying. So, unknowing to me, when I left outside, I went outside and come inside. He was crying on top of his bed. For me to come inside, and I found out that he was beating the baby, and by then he has already broken his hand. This is joint here. So, when he did it, he said in a car, he took stick and rubber, tied it, and said that two will join together. He's his two baby bone, that it's not going to take time for it to join. Right. He's not going to join, so okay. And he, he threatened me not to tell anybody about it. Yeah, and I said, okay, based on the threatening he gave to me. Then when he was going out, he will, he will lock me inside. So on the Sunday afternoon stroke evening, when he was going out, I have to come outside so that I will report it to his neighbor. And when I went to his neighbor, so when he left, and I went to report it to his neighbor, I told his neighbor, look at what happened. So and he was not around. His neighbor have to call him and told him that see what happened. The baby is already weak and it's no longer breathing well like that. And I said I should carry the baby and go. There is not anywhere. I should carry the baby and go. I should carry the baby. So the, the neighbor have to give me money and then I have to go to hospital. We went to the first one, went to the second one. They still rejected us. They told us to come to this FMC. That's when we came here and I, and I met one of my aunts that is taking care of me. So. That night, that Sunday night, uh, the third hospital we went to, the doctor had to call the vigilante people for him. So they have to escort us, so took us home. They ran the compound because I told him, told the vigilante people should stay with me because if they go, if if they go, I don't know what's happening to me and my baby because he have already found out I've told his neighbor. So they don't have to wait for him till the, till the time he came back. So around after 12 to 1, that's when he was coming back. So when he came back, came back, they caught him searching. They have to find our drugs. They have to find they find our drugs inside his bag. They, they anchor him and went, took him and go along with them. So I know it's the just they said he escaped from where they put him. That is all. She come she come and help me assigning my child and the bills and everything and I to help me more and I still want to go back to school. Mm, really, I can't really say what happened. But all I know that I, they just called me. Uh, that do I know the security from Amuri called me one night and asked me if Febo is my daughter. I said yes. They now inform me about the incident, the incident that happened. So, and I need to come down to see what happened. So when I asked, they said the, the, the husband to be that flogged the baby with hunger. So, and that is what I know that happened, and I have come to see my, myself. All I needed is the just, uh, justice for the baby. I need justice for the baby. And uh, in the financial aspect, too. Thank you. When they came in, I didn't really see the baby properly, and... Um, from what people were, the way people were reacting, I just knew that something was wrong. So when it was my turn to see the doctor, to take my little nephew to see the doctor, I finally saw the baby on a couch and I saw that the hand was, you know, a different color from the body. So I asked the doctor what the issue was. He said that the doctor, uh, sorry, that the hand was already gone. I wanted to find out what he meant by the hand was gone. So he said that the baby's hand was smashed with a hanger. So I asked the doctor the chances of survival of, for the baby. He said if only you know, funds could be raised for the baby, you know, that the baby would be treated immediately. So I asked how buoyant the mother of the baby was at that time. He said there was nothing available. So I asked if I could take the picture of the baby so that I could raise money online for him. 
he asked me to take permission from the mom, which I did. So I got home that night. I took the picture before I left the hospital. When I got home, I started sharing the pictures online, you know, my status. That was on the 10th of the, um, October. So on the 11th, I was able to raise little money, not up to 100,000 at that point. I came here, deposited into the baby's wallet, and treatment commenced. So um, on the 12th, I came back again, deposited more money, and they now took the baby for surgery on the 14th of October. So since then, we've been coming around to check on him, to know how he's faring. The right of the child has been trampled upon by his own biological father, from what we had from the mother. So I want to also say that um, according to the functions of the ma mandate of the commission, I call upon the law enforcement agency to do justice to this matter by making sure that the father whom they told us that he is at large is being searched for and apprehended and also prosecuted so that uh, the right of the child will be remedied because it is the, the commission's mandate to assist victims of human rights violations seek for redress and also assist them in having their remedies appropriated to them. Uh, what really interests me in the whole issue is that I wanted the general public to come to the aid of this little baby. The child can go to school and also ensure that artificial arm is being provided for this little baby. Just a way of reorienting the child and the mother to come to terms with reality because this is the reality and they have to face it. It was alleged that he was um, crying at night and then um, his father took offense and um, beat him, you know, physically, you know, abused him, I would say, because for crying and disturbing his peace. Um, thereafter, it was alleged that um, the father noticed that the arm was broken. One of the bones in the arm was, the bone in the arm was broken. And he himself went on to apply a very tight splint. And that splint was there for several days until it was noticed that the hand was um, becoming malodorous and gangrenous. And it was about then he was brought to the FMC. We saw the child uh, and uh, assessed that he had gangrene of that whole limb from hand to the shoulder region and there was nothing we could do to salvage it so we offered we offered amputation to save the boy's life because we didn't want the germs to go into the blood and cause you know other problems for the child but that was a little difficult to get because the, the, the father was said to is said to be on the run and we needed to convince the mother to give us consent to go on with the treatment. And um, he, she said, well, that her father said, no, um, yeah, the, the grandson's hand should not be amputated. So I requested to speak with him, to talk with him. You know, fortunately, um, there was someone from, I think an NGO or from one of the, uh, human rights societies that you know had known about it and then she called her and I spoke with her and you know she, she understood and said she had already seen the child and knew the condition the child was that whatever needed to be done we should go ahead and do so but it's not enough for us to carry on with her we need to speak with the, with the mother or a family member so fortunately I was able to get through to the girl's father I spoke with him um, and then he said he'll get back to me. He later got back to me and agreed, you know, with what we planned to do. So we resuscitated him, transfused him because he was quite pale and then um, went on to do the amputation. Now, um, we saw him earlier today. He's doing well. He's uh, recuperating well and thankfully he has survived. 
and uh, we're hopeful that in the right uh, setting he'll fulfill his potential. After now, it will be rehabilitation. And what that means is that we'll try and get him to optimally utilize, you know, to function optimally within the limits of his um, disability. Uh -huh. But hopefully, if he goes, if he's well uh, educated, he, get, he can get to the optimal um, educational level, he can get to near optimal physical function. But all we can do is just to try and help him to optimize, you know, his potentials, you know. And then uh, we'll start the rehabilitation before we discharge him. Um, but we'll discharge him. But we've already gotten in touch with the social welfare department of the hospital because, you know, we're also concerned about the home setting. If, um, if it's an abusive home, you know, we need to, uh, they'll, they'll, help, they'll help to know what to do about that.